Have you ever been on a forest exploration? Or do you enjoy going on hikes? Well, I do. And if you're anything like me, always poking around and playing with stuff on the trail, you might have spotted some squishy green bundles clinging onto rocks or tree trunks. Do you know what those are? Those are mosses, members of a group called bryophytes, the first land plants. Remember in our last video, we spoke about algae, those water-loving plants. Well, life in water wasn't always a picnic. Nutrients were getting depleted and predators were all around and sunlight only reached the surface. So some adventurous algae, they made a bold move onto land. And while some couldn't handle the comparatively drier conditions of land, the ones who developed features to handle this new life, they evolved into protobryophytes, which then evolved into bryophytes. Today, we will explore some of the adaptations that helped bryophytes survive on land. Now, unlike algae who lived surrounded by water, land was really, really dry. So bryophytes needed to stay hydrated in this new setting. One trick is that they developed rhizoids, root-like structures that help them anchor to moist rock, soil or tree bark and absorb water and minerals from them. Bryophytes also grew a stem-like structure called seta and leaf-like parts called phyllids. These phyllids could soak up water as bryophytes hugged the ground and stayed close to damp surfaces. And of course, being green, they perform photosynthesis. But here's the thing, bryophytes, they don't have a transport system, no xylem or phloem to move water and nutrients around. So even though they can absorb water, they can't spread it far. And that's why bryophytes remain short plants and they can't reach for the sunlight. Additionally, they need water for fertilization, which keeps them tied to damp and shady places and doesn't really let them colonize land entirely. Now, bryophytes, they have another very important feature. They were the first plants to evolve stomata, mouth-like pores that allowed them to take in and give out gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide. And this was a huge deal because back in the algae days, gaseous exchange happened passively by the process of diffusion. Stomata gave bryophytes more control over breathing on land, something that's essential for photosynthesis and survival in the dry air. Now, bryophytes come in three major forms, each with its own special features. Starting off with mosses. Mosses, like peat moss, helps reduce excess carbon dioxide and thus slows down global warming. Then we have liverworts. They help break down rocks into soil. They decompose dead logs of wood and return nutrients to the earth. They even provide nesting material for birds. Now finally, we have the hornworts. They are mostly found in tropical zones. They have got this horn-like projections, hence the name, and they form mutually beneficial partnerships with bacteria, which help them get nitrogen from the soil. Now, bryophytes, they're also super resilient. They can survive freezing winters and often they're the first plants to regrow after wildfires or floods. And while bryophytes are a diverse group of plants, they do all have one thing in common. They reproduce using spores. And how are these spores made? So bryophytes, they build two chambers on the surface of its phyllids, the leaf-like structures, a male chamber and a female chamber. Now the male chamber, it produces the sperms, while the female chamber contains the egg. Now the sperm that's produced in the male chamber needs to swim to the female chamber. And to be clear, the sperm can belong to the same moss or to a different moss. In order to swim, the sperm needs water and this is where bryophytes need water for fertilization. And that is what gives them the title of amphibians of the plant kingdom. And this is another reason bryophytes grow in damp and shady places and are short and close to the moist surface that they grow in. Once the sperm arrives, it fuses with the egg. And this happens within the female reproductive chamber in the process of fertilization. Now, fertilization leads to the formation of zygote. And the zygote grows into a thin, long stalk-like structure. 
and this structure eventually bears a capsule at the top. Now the capsule, it remains attached to the parent plant its whole life. But when the baby plant grows up, the cells inside the capsule, they create spores, which are released and carried by the wind. And when a spore lands somewhere nice and moist, it germinates and starts to grow into a new plant. And that's how bryophytes make more of themselves. Examples of bryophytes would include Funaria, Marchantia, and Anthoceros. So that's it about bryophytes. Now let's do a quick recap. Bryophytes are the first land plants. They are found in moist shady places. They have rhizoids and seta and phyllids. The phyllids and the rhizoids both help absorb water. They lack a transport system and which is why they stay short. They were also the first plants to develop a stomata. And bryophytes, they come in three major groups. Mosses like Funaria, liverworts like Marchantia, and hornworts like Anthoceros. And they reproduce using spores, with the water helping the sperm meet the egg, which gives them their title, amphibians of the plant kingdom.